I will indeed enter the simulation. Once again, what's going on, people? We're back. It's another episode of WandaVision Recap. I haven't quite thought of another cool nickname for this show yet, the way that I thought of Mando Watch. There's something that's like not quite flowing as easily on the tongue on the brain for this one, but we'll get to it. Uh, I'm myself. The movie nerd is here. The TV nerd is here. We have our second guest of the series on, Mr. John Burns of Burns Reviews. What's going on, dude? Happy to have you here. How's it going, man? It's good to be here. Uh, I've seen you guys. Uh, I've seen your show a little bit. I've seen both of you. You guys seem pretty chill. Um, how you guys doing? Doing, doing good, good, man. Doing and good. Uh, you seem chill as well. You know, you could sense that East Coaster energy. You know, we've all uh, <laughs> <laughs> we all have that similar mindset. So uh, it's it's gonna be a good a good time tonight, man. We appreciate you hanging with us. And of course, guys, go check out his channel, Burns Reviews on YouTube, and all the links will be in the description after the show. Please go support him, Dom. We have yes. one hell of a show tonight, don't we? Yes, we do. But real quick, Chris, I just wanted to point out, I wanted to do a retroactive correction from last week because last week I was unable to give the episodes any actual titles because they were only credited on Disney Plus as episodes one, two, three, four, and so on. But the good news is that, Chris, we actually have some episode names. So retroactively, last week's review was officially a review of episodes one, Film before live studio audience and two don't touch that dial. And tonight we will be reviewing the brand new episode that was mostly made available to a lot of you know big name critiquers right now. But unfortunately, we the humble human beings that we are, you know, unfortunately having to continue to kiss up to Disney for views. But hey, you know what? It's fine because that's what everyone's doing right now. So hey, I had a better joke plan on that segment because I was going to do some variation of that every week. But I'll get to that. But so tonight we are reviewing episode three. Now, in color, which I feel like is such a perfect description for this episode, just overall for what it accomplishes. But whether this will continue to scratch that MCU itch that we're all feeling or just continue to piss off those who, frankly, never enjoyed it to begin with, let's begin. <laughs> so, Chris, um, b before we dove in, like, what, 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 did you have, like, any hope that this was going to be better than last week? Or, or I mean, I've, has the cynicism already taken over? You're already like, no, I can, like, I've already... This has already annoyed me to the point where I can't even appreciate this. No, never. Like I said at the end of last week, I, I give everything a fair shake because as someone who creates art, I want, if you don't like my first three albums, maybe you like my fourth. And I just think that's the way you have to treat it. For example, I'm a diehard Weezer fan. They're in my top 10 favorite bands of all time, although I think they only have four good albums out of 13. But that does not take away from those four albums that are great. They just made seven albums that I don't really care for too much. And that's just kind of how it is. You know what I mean? So it's just like I give everything a fair shake and I'm glad I did this week because I, I will just spoiler alert my initial reaction, slight improvement. But right. we'll get into it because there are clearly always going to be things I dislike when it comes to yes. Marvel. And of so. course, we have a guest here. So real quick, first impression going into this week, Johnny Boy, what did you think going? Well, first off, what were your kind of quick impressions of last week's episodes? Just like kind of the refreshing, you know, diving back into the MCU and then like how that fed your feelings going into this episode. Um, well, first of all, I, I think it's kind of fascinating, like you said, that they actually just got around to labeling the actual shows. Like, that seems like a thing that, like, you would see here with us on YouTube. Like, oh, I forgot to label it. Like, you're Disney. How do you forget to label your shows on the biggest platform that you just put out? So that's cool. That's a thing. But as far as my impression of the show, you're right. I mean, for me personally, I'm looking forward to Loki. Um, kind of looking forward to Winter Soldier. This was like not really on my I can't wait for list. It was like, yeah, okay, whatever. First two episodes, I was like, this is bad. I mean, not bad, but I mean, we're so spoiled by the MCU with the action and the that when we just we just walked out of Endgame. I mean, so we we started up here and now like, you know, we're watching a a love letter to TV land because Kevin Feige seems to have like a kind of hard on for that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I didn't love it. I remember watching the second episode of it going, wow, they just showed us the, the recap of episode one, but the recap is kind of all you really needed because the rest of it, the rest of it was all fluff. It was all, you know, I love Lucy kind of, kind of stuff. So didn't love one and two, uh, kind of like Chris said, though, I do think three was a lot better. Um, we're actually starting to get a little bit of momentum the train has left the station we're moving um yeah i think episode three is my my favorite thus far i guess um yeah 
you have a lot of interesting of stuff that kind of raises a couple of eyebrows. Yeah, yeah definitely we have yeah. a long and interesting ride ahead yeah, of us. I hope it gets more interesting. Dom, before I let you take that, I do want to turn our attention to the chat. We have of some course, folks, as always. folks hanging out with us tonight. Ooh. Jay Manley, thanks for being here as always. And of course, Stranger Boy and everyone else who's uh, listening and not chatting. Hey, guys, don't be afraid. Leave a comment. We'd love to talk to you. There's Seriously, a lot of you guys who kind of hang out and don't really communicate, which is fine. I get it. I, I was a shy kid, too, but. We love the chat. And if you guys want to let, let us know what you think in the comments, let us know what you think in the comments. Do not be afraid. This is a friendly community. Don, what were you going to say? Talking is literally in our title overall. <laughs> True. We love to talk with you. So, yeah, Dom, dude, um, shall yeah, we kind of crack into say, this episode? Yeah, I was real quick. I was going to say it was interesting how even with, the again, the stylish change, it's like the, the transition overall to more modernity. Like people seem to be more comfortable with it than the kind of awkward stylisms of the first two episodes. So that's just automatically kind of more comforting to the mind stylistically. But also, once again, they're doing... Not exactly a Watchmen ripoff because Watchmen, I think, did this much better as far as folding the mystery overall into the plot. This one is still hinting at it, but the hints have gotten bigger, especially with two very, very deep cuts as far as hinting at where the future of the MCU could go. So with that being said, people, let us dive in. This is section one of the recap show, that being the actual recap section itself. So the plot... Once again, directed by Matt Shackman and written this time by Megan McDonald. So they're now actually announcing writers as well for this. Uh, overall showrunner, Jack Schaefer. Um, what's it called? Um, inexplicably, following up the plot point at the end of the last episode, Wanda is now pregnant. And uh, she is, of course, progressing at an alarming rate to the point where even Vision with his own Android self cannot keep up. Will he be? Will they be able? But unfortunately, as time is going on and Wanda is magicking things up around them, strange visual cues start popping up that point to, once again, the fact that this reality is not at all real. Meanwhile, Vision encounters some strange activities from the neighbors outside as the whole reality seems to start turning into a David Lynchian nightmare inexplicably, with the hints becoming even stronger as far as the greater universe and what's happening out side we got some big deep cut deep cut episodes this moment some very strong hints as to some characters coming at a later point overall but once again i'd say that the show is continuing to hint towards wanda's overall and continued destabilization from possibly an attempt to resurrect vision i believe is if if what i've been hearing is true so again not a very long recap but I feel like that covers pretty much everything that happens overall. Of course, at the end of the episode, uh, once Wanda has progressed to the point of a full nine months and is ready to give birth within a matter of hours, she gives birth, of course, to twins Billy and Tommy, who, of course, for any Young Avengers diehard fans will know, eventually become the Young Avengers members Wiccan and Speed. More on them later in the, in the connection to the greater overall comic book verse. So, with that being said, John, you have a point? I have a question, and it might yes. be a dumb question. If there's like an MCU diehard fan uh, down the chat, maybe they can let me know. Do you guys know where the Mind Stone is, like at the moment? Because I know Cap was supposed to bring all the stones back, and obviously everything, like what their logic is, like whatever happened, happened. Vision was killed by Thanos before all that. So is there just no Mind Do you know what I mean? Uh oh, so, okay, so here's the thing. We'll cover this. Let, let's let's put a pin in this. No, no, here's the thing. This okay. is good. We'll put a pin in this. We'll save it for connection to the greater Orville MCU universe because, yes, you're right, but this just sparked an idea in my mind as far as how this could tie to everything else. I, I was so, just like, if you had like a quick, a like, question. if you knew or didn't. Right. It, it is like, a very you know good question, I mean? but we will answer it later, and See, I'll come to the point the that I've in my head. That is, that is something that they have not made clear about the Loki show either. What the hell exactly is going on? How is this possible? The how is this possible is something that I think we still don't know, but I, I trust Dom when he says it's going to be worth it to discuss yeah. it later on. But yeah. that well, is the, a great question. There's, yeah. that well, is, also, the, the weird thing... Because I forgot, man. Loki. Endgame was so freaking long ago. The, the weird right? thing about Loki was that <laughs> Loki was the only one that was specifically hinted at in Endgame. When you see 2012 Loki pick up the Tesseract and use it to get away. That's the only yeah, other true. one. Right. Like Falcon and Winter Soldier and at least WandaVision seem to be like natural progressions. But, you know, we still have no idea right now. So, with that being said, the nature that's of WandaVision, though, it's like hard to exactly much. tell what's going on. And it kind of, but yeah, I feel you, man. So, with that being said, I'm just, that's I'm just making sure I didn't like forget anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, but totally. I mean, same here, dude. Endgame was so long ago at this point. It was, it's Two been years. a crazy year of 2020. Like, I've certainly have the same questions you have. Yeah. So. <laughs> With that being said, let's move on to positives and negatives. Uh, what we, what our overall thoughts kind of were, just initial impressions coming off of the episode. So, John, you go first. What did you think of the uh, newest episode, Now in Color? I, I enjoyed it. I mean, you know, considering it, 
anything that's an improvement from the the first episode, I thought it was a lot better. That the second episode was it when uh you know he ate the gum by mistake and then his gears were kind of clogged up and then he couldn't do his magic trick. I was like, what are we doing? What is the point of this? Um, it kind of felt it's starting to feel more and more like um I don't know a little bit like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind a little bit because. It feels like we're in her mind and she only sees what she wants to see. She's editing out the parts that she wants to keep, but she's pushing things up that she doesn't. Um, so, yeah, clearly she's having a mental breakdown and we're stuck in her head. I feel like you got like good guys and bad guys. Um, I'm really bad at names, but uh, who was the one? Was it like uh, Geraldine? I'm getting the oh. feeling that maybe she's like the heroes and then maybe the, the villains are like, you know, Catherine Hahn and the neighbors and... I don't know. I'm, I'm speculating at the moment, but there's definitely like a divide. You know, you have like the sword organization. I don't mean to get all over the place, but um, I think it's a I think it's much better um, as far as the cons. I mean, I just want more. I feel like I'm watching Lost a little bit where it's like I've been tricked before where it's like, here's your mystery box. And traditionally speaking, you know, by the time you get to the end of like season five or six or whatever it is, you know, it's going to be a letdown. So there is that feeling of, all right, you're, you're pulling me around and you're very front loaded. And I, I want to be good, but I, I do have my reservations. The one thing I will say about that loss reference is the thing about it, though, it was enjoyable watching the mystery box unfold. Even sure. though some people have their gripes with the ending, whereas right now I don't find it very enjoyable. You know, I can think of so many different references, so many different books, video games, comics, TV shows even that I've seen that have done this concept, but only way more gripping, way more interesting. I do agree with the overall majority of your point. And just so you know, John, I'm a huge loss fan. So I will defend that show at every point in turn <laughs> and, try and, and try and take a little bit of the heat off it. Like in that in regards to that, if I can help it, but also that did kind of bode into my point here, because I think like there's this network show wayward pines. I think it aired on ABC or NBC, like super network TV, like the tail end of network TV, 2015 to 2016. Really oh, cool yeah. miniseries. I, I, I saw um, Matt Dillon, right? Exactly. And, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I enjoyed it. But the thing is, it was... It was very network, network e style writing, very tropey, very cliche. But that had way more interesting tie-ins to the world and to what's going on and sort of like, oh, is this fake? Are they imagining this? Is this actually happening? Then what WandaVision's giving us. Like WandaVision's like even more clean in PC, for lack of a better word, than that network show that I wrote about this crazy dark doctor who was overwatching them from a tower because they're the last people of humanity. And if they can survive, then maybe they can rebuild a society. It's like even that show had more interesting things like crickets in the grass, uh, but they weren't actually crickets. It was a speaker playing the sound of crickets in the bushes. And when he looks into the bushes, he looks over his shoulders and some of the townsfolk are looking at him. Where are those moments that build suspension in this show? Uh, you, it, you know, suspense, not suspension. Sorry. I just feel like this is such a poor example of the premise. And it's like, this is like what to not do for this type of premise. And so if you want to okay. learn how to write this type of story, you need to watch WandaVision's episode at least one through one through three to realize like, hey, this is not a way to get viewers. This is a way to not get viewers gripped out the gates. You know, it's like so I'm very frustrated with it so far. And that's why I kind of like chimed in after your Lost point, because at least with Lost, I was hooked each week, even when I will admit as one yeah. of the biggest Lost fans, season six let me down very hard. I at least was hooked and had enough stock built in where I had to stick to the end there. Whereas if I wasn't covering this week to week, I might have backed out by now. I can give it props well, to the filmmaking, this... the homage to like, you know, yesteryear. I love classic TV. I grew up watching it in the house. I appreciate it, but it's not enough so far. Yes, the performances are great, but they're not enough for me so far. You know, the mystery is why I'm here and I'm not getting a, a good execution of that. Well, the hook, you know, is the MCU 23 movies that came before it or was it 29? I've, I've lost track. That's kind of like 23. Okay, so I had it. So that's the hook and that's, you're right. If this was like, a new thing that had no connection to the MCU, it would be canceled in a week. Absolutely. Because unless somebody had like a, an affinity for TV land and they thought it was kind of cool, <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't know. It almost feels like Kevin Feig is like, hey, you know what? We have a we have covered every single demographic. But you know who's not showing up to this uh, MCU? Grandma and grandpa. Well, you know what? <laughs> now we got you covered, baby. And I don't know. I mean, I. I guess. 
Yeah, look, I'm not going to lie. The stylisms I'm have not bothered me overall. And just kind of the idea of just, like, writing something for viewers, I think that that comment just bothers me overall because that's just so limiting to creativity. But what I will say is that I've... I, I'm still doing what I did last week, which is I'm kind of putting aside my kind of kind of aversion to the stylistic choices and still respecting the greatest, the kind of the overall mystery. And I really liked it because this episode specifically made some very, very direct hints at that. Um, kind of, it's a weird, it's kind of weird. I'm assuming that Disney is just monitoring everybody that's reviewing it right now when they did the Ultron and, and Pietro drops and they had Wanda singing in Russian. Oh, man, like, and also I wanted to give props to Vision, too, because I think they did a really smart thing in this episode, which is they start to have Vision become self-aware of the fantasy as well, not just kind of the people around it. And it's and even though it's not completely specified yet, you begin to see where certain of the characters stand. You know, if Catherine Hahn and her husband are actual like kind of deceivers and not a part of this reality, they just somehow got in. They're doing a very good job of masking it. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for poor Geraldine, or a.k.a. Monica Rambeau, daughter of Maria Rambeau from Captain Marvel. The little girl from Captain Marvel, that's who that is, portrayed by um, oh. uh, portrayed by Tiana Paris. And, um, yeah, she did not do a very good job of concealing the fact that she's working for S.W.O.R.D., who is very, very clearly working with the FBI and invested in this. And that's how Jimmy Woo's and Kat Dennings are involved. And, um, yeah, so... I, I, but that that being said, like, I'm still getting a lot out of it. Like, I'm still in suspension each week. Like, every time I, I feel myself starting to get a little bit bored with it, like, something kicks in. And it's like, okay, yeah, now we're getting there. Like, Chris, in a weird way, I'm starting to begin to understand why you were so obsessed with loss. Because if this is how it felt week to week, it's like, okay. Now, granted, I know this could never be to the same level as that. But still, like, I think you can understand my sentiment. I, I understand your sentiment, but I, I just don't see that happening here. I think what's happening here really is just brainwashing from 23 movies that people settled for and people just being so happy to finally get something new. And so that now that it's finally new and it's in a new way too, distributed week by week in a half hour sitcom style story, which has never been done before by this greater universe, people are just making excuses for it. I'm not saying you're doing that because you actually get in there and critique the filmmaking and like dissect it in a way that like makes sense. You actually back up your point on like so many of these other like people that are just like reviewing it week to week. But let me just say, like I said, I, I really, I think they're doing an amazing job. Kind of like you said, Burns going back to the TV land section, uh, you know, paying nice homage to that. I think that they know the time frame that they're working in and it doesn't feel forced. It feels very organic. It feels very natural. All the little sitcom -y tropes of back then, you know, like sprinklers going on. It's very like um, physical humor, which they had a lot of back then, uh, you know, homage to like the slapstick era which i know this isn't slapstick but you have like those funny sort of like household things happening um you know there there's like the stork walking around it's quirky she never notices it okay i get it that made audiences laugh back in the day and as tv was developing the ideas were being tried and stuff i understand i think that's really cool but to me just like the way that they're sort of the pacing is i think my real issue here the dissemination of it i think it needs to move at a faster pace because i still don't feel hooked and we're three episodes in and because i know these these 23 movies that came before it and because i actually have enjoyed some of them and i actually have thought that there were a lot of actual interesting plot lines in those 23 movies i i you know I, that factors into my opinion of this is a very weak series so far because you, you can't not talk about this without talking about the history of the mcu right and so with that being said i feel very lackluster i feel very let down interesting point do you think it could be because like we're not in a movie we're actually in a tv show I think it's the way they distributed the TV show. I actually agree with Jay when he asks, uh, and I said this last week as well, sh would this have been better being binge-worthy? I think so. I think you want to get right yeah. to the mystery. And if the first three episodes so far have only given you the slightest hint of what's going on, I don't know. It's, it's It hasn't hooked me. And I think if it was bingeable, I may be more forgiving because I said, okay, well, they're half hour each. I can watch like three tonight, two, two more in the morning when I wake up. And in like a 12 hour period, I'm sucked into the middle of this thing. Whereas I have to wait week by week by week, you know, it, even if they gave us like half the season, that would have been an improvement, I right. think, which was the original plan because the original plan was to do six. And then they upped it to nine when they dropped the first two. Oh. And I think that hurts them. I honestly think I, that hurts. Yeah, them. I, that's. Oh. It, 
I mean, does it seem like there's much here? I mean, do, what do I seem like right now? Do I seem like I'm just cr critiquing it to be that guy, or do I am I making valid points? Like I'm literally asking you guys, like, what do you think? It it How does do now that you say that it does feel like they added, you know, was I guess thirty percent more filler to pad the storyline. I guess right. Yeah, yeah like, no. Was I'll, it good yeah. B-roll takes, and were they like, we got to use this, and like this is gonna be? Well, our no, money it's maker, just or? it's just <laughs> like, well, we're gonna add more of the sitcommy stuff, and then yeah, yeah everything that was everything, every little gimmick, every, every little like, hey, that's funny. They probably just put it back in. Yeah, right, like who goes back to the editing room floor and picks up the pieces of like cut film? They add access to the studios overall, and they just use their space for in order to fill up the first couple of episodes so they could do more sitcom homages rather than just jump into the story automatically. That's what I will say. And that is what I think was lost well, from the bouncing from nine to six episodes overall. And with that being said, kind of, I, I mean, I don't know. That's the problem. Like, to me, the biggest takeaway for me is that there's not that much left to talk about overall. It's like, it sounds like we're on repeat kind of, but we just rinse and repeat, you know? Because even though the stylisms I feel like could provide enough, you know, gateway for a conversation. It doesn't feel like they do because it's like, Oh, we don't want to talk about the filmmaking because you know, we've seen it before. It's boring and repetitive. We don't want to talk about the script, the plot lines though, as far as like the hints to the greater MCU, even those it's like, it's like almost like this show is kind of depending on them in a very strange way. You know, like the subtle hints, they make, they're making them like part of the plot. Now that to me is still like kind of the only self fresh self-referential part that's sticking through and i'm still wondering if kind of the comic booky nature of how they're distributing these stories now with each story taking on such a vastly different genre how that's going to do in the long run that's kind of what i'm interested in as far as why i continue to consume their content yeah like this was like just another sort of hard episode to get through and it's crazy to say that because they put so much into this it's like their start it's first of all their second flagship show that really is of note that is in an animation outside of the Mandalorian on their brand new streaming service, which is just about to round a year old, if not just hit a year old. They don't have much on this service that's been around forever, aside from a giant back catalog, which granted they do have. But now they're getting into original content and all we're doing right now is figuring out how to talk about it. What does that say? It's like, what does that yeah. mean? Yeah, Mandalorian was <laughs> awesome. I really liked season two. But it's just like, don't you expect more from the MCU? Even me, someone who hates it, I at least expected a bar of quality considering they have such a formula. I at least well, expected it to be a baseline level of except solid. we're saying this now, I, and in four weeks, we could be saying the total opposite. Right, and I, I will I give think, each episode a chance. I think you're right that time will not be kind to the show. You're right, because right now we're watching it going, oh, well, you know what? We're all stuck inside. We're all kind of like, you know, things are the way they are. You know, we just want new content. So, yeah, in five years, we're going to look back and go, hmm. Um, let me ask you a question because I'm a little way to the party on like the this new story. Uh, was it always intended to be nine? Like, was this a thing that happened after 2020 and they said we need to delay filming Winter Soldier? We need to like, is it like a side effect of 2020 that they made it nine episodes and not six? Well, as of right now, the only thing I know is that filming began in April of last year and it was delayed. Um, so I think the original plan was for all of them to debut in fall of last year or, and unfortunately filming was, you know, put on hold. So I think the original plan was to put out the six, but at the same time, that could have also just been a marketing strategy because studios do that all the time where they say, oh, it's going right. to be a certain amount of episodes. Then they tack on like one or two extra episodes at the end. I've seen that happen plenty of times before. So once COVID happened, they came back in November and finished shooting there. And that's where I'm assuming the extra episodes came on as far. And then when they decided to invest in the strategy, following the star Wars strategy, that's kind of where they got their ilk from it does feel like they were trying to give the other shows a yeah. little bit of padding a little bit of time right but to agree with chris's point though i will say that again where it differs is that the mandalorian is episodic it, it, it kind of each story to me is still standalone enough that you can enjoy it week to week overall i think wandavision yeah. is a show that would have benefited from binging because of how the overall mystery is spread throughout it and i think that again binge i, I saw i've seen a lot of comments on this saying that binge viewing is kind of ruining the experience for these types of shows because the fact that the studio still can't differentiate between which shows should be dropped at once um, versus which shows should be dropped week to week as far as their overall marketing strategy. But again, we're only saying that as far as how the story goes because I know people who are watching it and they're still enjoying it week to week, you know, and I feel like they would be enjoying it even if we weren't in lockdown, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, I think the, the, the week to week is, is kind of a thing that 
a lot of people kind of do miss. Like they used to call it the water cooler talk. You'd be like, you know, you would talk about, hey, did you see the new show? You can't do that. For one, even if you both are equally caught up on a show, you like you can't talk about 10 hours of a show without your mind melting. Like, oh, yeah, remember in episode two? Like, not really, because that was, you know, it all kind of melts together. So I understand, like, wanting to bring that back, and it's kind of good. But this is not the show for it at all. Uh, I just watched The Boys. That was the show, because at least week to week, things kind of happen. The middle was a little slow, but. Yeah, um and, and like you said chris and and lost was like the definitive week to week show that people would talk about um but you don't have that anymore and and this show this show should have been a binge it should have been one block or and it should have been what? more compelling i i totally see that point and I, I wish it was because i actually think that there's something that is lost when it comes to pop culture and fandoms in regards to losing that week to week water cool water cooler. I mean, we're trying to recreate that right now. Obviously we hope the chat interacts. We have guests on each week for this series because we had high hopes for this show because I also like, you know, let's, let's like, I do want to get back to um, WandaVision, but to make my point, and then I do have a, a point for you, Dom, off what you just said, but to make my point about sort of your water cooler thing, because it is an interesting topic. Look at Cobra Kai. That was an awesome third season. I don't know if you watched it, but I'm sure you've at least seen the impact it's had in pop culture. It was number one up. on Netflix for like three weeks, but now it's gone because they dropped it all at once. It was bingeable. It's out of the zeitgeist. All the YouTubers stopped making videos on it at least two weeks ago, and now we wait and we forget about it until it comes out again. So I think it comes down to like writing and something I've kind of noticed going back and watching a lot of older movies, especially older science fiction movies. Like I just watched Invasion of the Body Snatchers. That was one of the most compelling science fiction films from 1956 that I've ever watched. And they couldn't show the, the crazy aliens. They couldn't show anything because they didn't have the technology or the budget to do it. But the writing was so strong that I was scared. I was into it. I was wondering if the characters were going to make it out alive. Whereas this kind of seems to, like Jay saying in the chat, sort of relying more, in my opinion, on like the tie-ins, on the Easter eggs, whereas it doesn't seem to be as focused on the plot, making it compelling each week as I would want. Because let's be honest, you said it before we went live, that episode where Wanda and you know the Vision are doing that little stupid um, gum in his gears pun uh, magic show, that was a poor excuse for an episode. I mean, if that's like, because the old sitcoms of the day, yes, they're corny, yes, they're cliche, but they were actually good. That's why they're like some of the hallmark shows of all time. It's just a different time, so the sensibilities aren't as modern, but the writing was still 10 times better than what we've gotten, in my opinion. Yeah, one thing I've learned and I, and is I think that... One, one thing I've learned is that... Uh, well, what's it called from a couple of the podcasts that I've listened to is that when it comes to kind of Chris to bounce off your point about the comparison to older TV shows, all those older TV shows always had lessons of the week. Every single time, no matter how it ended, no matter how kind of nonsensical the episode got, there was always a lesson to be learned. Marvel is not taking that approach at all. They're just making the ending yet another tie in and, and yet another cliffhanger in order to keep you invested. They're literally taking the Walking Dead strategy for the show. But guess what? That show had millions of viewers for a lot of years overall. And that strategy worked. And it seems to be working again here overall. But with that being said, it's still kind of interesting how that factors into it because they can just kind of lean into this and it'll get eyeballs based off of just, you know, embodying the comic book without actually having to be about anything, which to me is very, very interesting, kind of. Yeah, but it's interesting on paper. I think what we're getting is the execution of that, and it's the farthest thing from interesting. I mean, Dom, that actually, I'm glad you brought us there. Then, John, I do want to get to what you were going to say. But what kind of started this little thought train was you had said earlier that, you know, sort of bouncing back, talking about our positives and negatives. It felt to me like you actually didn't enjoy this episode as much as you did week one or two. So if that's the case, what kind of happened between your, you know, oh, no, week I enjoyed one this episode sort of a saying? Lot. I okay. enjoyed this episode a lot. I'm just talking about kind of, the no, I'm just talking about kind of the examination of uh, what's called of, of kind of how they're expanding with their comic book storytelling and kind of seeing if they can get away from kind of the normal like kind of lesson of the week mentality overall. Mm. You know, like what was learned from this episode? What was learned from the last two episodes? Literally nothing. They were literally just plays on sitcom formulas, fully aware of the fact that they are in repetitive sitcom formulas. But the point is that that theme is still continued to this week where it is just a distraction, kind of, you know? And not to mention the fact that they centered an entire storyline around a setup for a potential Young Avengers, as as well as how that's going to factor into Wanda's final breakdown, which comes, again, there's so much, I feel like we're going to have so much to talk about with connections to the comic books here. But 
I guess um, I just think I see your point. But I just think that it's okay if they choose not to sort of pay homage to like the lesson of the week. But what they do to sort of push together this like weird kind of like, is she, does she realize what's going on? Like what's happening behind the curtain? The little bits of like, you know, the bee man from last week. Or for example, at the end of this week, like that character who helped deliver her baby acting all weird and freaky saying that thing about Ultron, they're not, they haven't been strong enough to grip me. So if the sitcom writing is going to be thin and not have a lesson of the week or, or just be kind of so zany that it doesn't make sense or it's not entertaining, what they're doing in regards to the overall storyline, which I think is where we'll get to, the crazy part of this, you know, like the mind war part, it hasn't been strong enough to pull me in. So I see your point, but it's just not working for me. I don't know. What about what about you, John? Um, I'm willing to give it a little bit more slack and see where it goes. I mean, it's still pretty early. I mean, you, like you said, I didn't realize it was nine. I thought it was like maybe seven or eight. Um, but knowing that, I mean, we're only a third in. So this is the end of act one, I guess, um, yes. in, in season one. So uh, like, you know, I, like you said, the I don't expect them to do a, a lesson of the week. Uh, I think it's just, like I said, more of that eternal sunshine type of deal where she's kind of trying to deflect reality and not deal with whatever problems that are going on in her head. And she's just, you know, in denial about essentially everything. And she's made some type of little box that she's living in. Um, I'm willing to give it a little bit more slack. I mean, like you said before, we are in a time where we're kind of starving for uh, new content. And typically, you know, in my opinion, the MCU if nothing else, it's been average or above. It's never been tremendously awful. Um, so, yeah, I mean, um, I, I haven't read any of the uh, House of M kind of stuff. I mean, I kind of don't want to spoil too much or know too much. I, I kind of have like I heard some videos about like what it could be and manifesto, all that kind of stuff. But I really don't want to. I remember I read like was like Captain America Civil War. They they take little nuggets and a little bit. but um, I don't know. It's it's not great. I mean, on the upside, at least they're not an hour a piece. At least they're only like 20 minutes. Can you imagine if there was nine of these and they were like six, 57 minutes each? Oh, God. Don't Terrible. even. That's Terrible. torture. Right? That would be awful. <laughs> they would have it's they would have made they would have made vision going to get the doctor like a whole thing. They would have just yeah. stretched that out right. and it would have been He bumps been... into a milkman, he spills the milkman's drink, he has to go and refill the milkman's supply before he goes to get to the doctor. It'd be so terrible. I, I, yeah. I totally I, agree. I also it, I also it already kind of sounds like a better show though. It does. That's <laughs> I, what I'm saying. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I'm sorry, John, but like I didn't mean to cut you off, but I, I hear your points. I, I am gonna still give it a chance. Don't think I'm not, John, but this is the MCU. They have unlimited resources at their disposals. They could get the best writers of our day to work on this thing. And this is what we get. I just don't want to let them off the hook. Maybe I'm the only person in the world that won't let them off the hook. But what we're getting right now, it feels like film school grad gets hired on first show as showrunner. And there's going to be a few mistakes like Lovecraft Country, but we're learning. So it's okay. Whereas this, it's like, okay, cool. I might, you know, if I didn't, if I had a Disney Plus subscription, I would think about canceling it. I don't. Dom's a very good friend. Yeah, and but I'm glad that Dom be, is such a good friend. <laughs> but to be fair, act one of anything is usually just okay. You're just meeting the disagree characters. Disagree fully, but. I mean, yeah, I got to right? disagree with you there, man. I, honestly, I hate to do it. I just, I just think act one of maybe these formulaic Marvel films aren't always the best, but like. For example, I was just watching uh, a little bit of Lord of the Rings as I was getting ready, just tossed it on, whatever. I'm gripped, dude. When Frodo get, meets, like, you know, Gandalf for that first time, Gandalf comes down the mountain, a wizard is never late. Like, I'm I'm hooked instantly. I don't care what's going on. It could be the worst dialogue ever. It's just so well written that I'm like, oh, cool. These characters feel real. They feel alive. And I'm just into it. So I think... I just think it's poor writing and poor pacing. And I think that's what's killing the show. And it's so weird to say that because I think the filmmaking, the cinematography and like the mise-en-scene, you know, the atmosphere of back in the day, the old sitcoms is done so well, but it seems thin around all that, which sucks because yeah. I wanted to like this. I really, you can ask Dom, me being the guy who doesn't like Marvel that much. I've been hyped on this because I read House of M so much better. J John, don't read that if you want to like hate this show. Do not read that. 
<laughs> Ten also, times. Also, Avengers Disassemble and a couple of other Wanda arcs that this is directly based off of. But yeah, the interesting thing about the, the Scarlet Witch is it's always been a really weird character that the comics have really not known what to do with. Like one minute she can kind of just like wave and levitate objects and the next minute she kind of like has these reality altering powers and the next minute it's like it's never kind of clearly been defined overall and i feel like the show is definitely a reflection of that and i feel like it's subjective whether that works or not but that's what i mean kind of when it goes back to like kind of the comic book version of storytelling is this is probably one of the most direct adaptations i've seen like, of, of all of the MCU adaptations, kind of, you know? All of the rest of the MCU adaptations are, like, loosely um, alluding to the source material. But, uh, Jay, we did talk about this, and Lovecraft Country sucks. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, like, Jay. Great pilot. Yeah. I will like, give does, him that. Does that, like, does that make sense, though, as far as that goes? I mean, I, like I, was yeah, I, I know what you guys are saying, but, like, I'm going to take, like, the, the Kevin Smith point of view, if right. I will. Because right. I'm a little bit older than you guys you guys are a little bit younger i was around during the time when you know x-men was a big deal or blade was a big deal and you know you talk about direct adaptations you watch that first x-men and it's like they're wearing leather because it's almost like the, the matrix was big at the time and you know like so before. like yeah and it was this thing where it was like it couldn't be the comic it had to be a movie with a little bit of, you know, elements from the comics. Now it's reversed. Now it's like fully blown comics. So when I get something like WandaVision, man, it's we've come so far from nothing to this. To me, it's nitpicky. And yeah, it's not always going to be great. You know, there's some of the MC movies I thought were kind of like bleh. Like Guardians 2, bleh. I mean, disagree. in my opinion. Hard disagree. Yeah, well, you know what? It's, it's, uh, there's, uh, but, but even that, there are scenes in that movie that are really good. But then there's a lot of like other stuff. I'm like, eh. I will I will take it back because like I do like like the ending of that movie, but all of it is like how can you can really complain? Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like is that kind of and and granted, WandaVision was never a show that I had extremely high expectations for in the in the in the first place. So I can't say that they were ever like broken or I'm like, oh my god, this is this is not what I thought it would be. Like I had like average expectations and they're pretty much met at average so fair enough yeah. i do see what you mean in the regards to like how can you complain i mean the superhero medium has come such a long way where i feel like for the most part we get more quality films than we do uh you know i mean let's not talk about dc but like we get more quality films than we do sub quality at least in the mcu and like there's even films in the mcu like i love thor the dark world for the drama aspects of it i thought that that was actually a bit of a different step and really well done and there are a lot of people who actually even like their worst films so i understand what you're saying and i will admit you know you just met me tonight for the first time five minutes before we went live i've never been the biggest superhero guy on screen because i feel like it tries to appease too many different walks of life and so they get away from the characters that i read on the page because i read all these guys on the page for the most part first as a comic reader before i got to see them on the big screen so I always feel like you lose a little something because they're just trying to put as many butts in seats as they can. So I, I do See, know and that's the point I want, I, want, I want to make before. I don't mean to cut you off, but that was the point I was, was going to make before is that you're right. I purposely did not want to go and read House of M or anything like that. The, the Vision comic, I think there's another one that's kind of based on. Because um, quick example, I personally hate the movie Ready Player One. I read the book and then I saw mm. the movie and I'm like the one guy of all the people I know. My girlfriend doesn't like it either because she read the book too. But of everybody that I talk about this movie, they're like, oh my God, it's amazing. And I'm like, I fucking hate it because I read the book. So if you, knowing that, I don't read the comics that are attached to the MCU because I know it'll only, like you said, ruin it for me. You know what I mean? Definitely don't do I go that. In there, I go in there as like a blank page and just kind of, you know, see what's what. Yeah. So yeah. with that being said, uh, we're, we're, we're getting a little bit down mean. there, so I definitely think we need to move on to MVP overall. So, sure. hard as it may seem, we have to award an MVP, which is basically, uh, John, you're new here, so it's basically any aspect of this show, person, character, director, behind the scenes, stage, performer, anything, kind of. And honestly, uh, my MVP tonight is the set designers, because just for how beautifully they recreate the sets kind of and really embody it and make us feel like we're back in like one of those like i don't know this, this was kind of throwing off like a late 70s early 80s vibe like but i could just brady bunch style like, thing yeah brady bunch style but i could just easily see like that 70s show taking place in this one you know or like home improvement you know i was getting strong vibes from that but i'm assuming we'll hit that later on but so that's my mvp of the night yeah it's 
that's a solid one. And I uh, I hate to echo it, but I feel the same exact way. I share the same sentiment. I think really the uh, the set designers, man, though, though, I mean, they never get love. Let's give them love. They're killing it. They yeah, actually they, they, actually crushing, they actually have work to do now instead of just decorating a green stage. And you know what's really cool, too? I actually enjoy the live audience. It really, really is... I think it's a nice touch well, because you know they funny? do like that classic um, thing on the microphone. This is like an audio guy thing, but like they, it's, it's a little too hot. The mic's a little too hot. So when the audience really gets rowdy, it has like that slight little grit to yep. it and it feels very old school and it's a nice touch. It's a nice yeah. little touch. Yeah. What I was going to ask is Chris, did you notice that how like the audience is there like hard at the beginning and then as the episode goes on, they slowly go away. Even like the funnier, light, more lighthearted moments, like the audience like, like completely goes away. And by the end of the episode, it's gone. Like, I'm I wondering if that's that. like an intentional choice. I did not notice that. That seems like an intentional choice. That's really cool. That's what I'm saying. Like all the extra things are working for this. Like the score in each episode kind of being uniquely tied cool. to the premise and the and the era that they're in. This having that very like late 60s, sort of 70s custom intro, the super long sitcom intro song. Just when you think it's going to end, there's a second half to the song. It's like the little things in this show that work, which really upset me when we look at it look at it as an overall picture but yeah i'm with you dom like the costume designs the people that never get love essentially yes. are my mvps for this episode yes, they what about you uh Absolutely. john um i'd agree with that but just not to double dip into you know having the same answer uh, i think paul bettany is kind of underrated in all this because you know i'm sure he looks at this and goes like what are we doing this is not this is not <laughs> what we typically do with vision but um, of all the characters I've seen in the show thus far, I feel like he understands what the sitcom is and he feels the most um, authentic to the genre. Like I look at um, Elizabeth Olsen or Catherine Hahn and like it doesn't really feel great. Like it's not quite like on the nose, but I feel like with uh, Bettany, he feels very Dick Van Dyke and he just gets it. And he can make that switch from that sitcom to that scene where he's like, you know, very serious and stoic. And he's like, something's not right with this. And then he's just, he's back in it again. So as much as we don't like those scenes where he's like, I've got gum in my gears. And he's like, now I'm drunk. He does understand it. And he does deliver on what is being asked of him. So I'm going to give it to Paul Bettany. Yeah, yeah I and, absolutely. That's a good and just choice. before we move on to the next segment, because Dom, if you remember last week, I, uh, you know, didn't really wasn't too impressed with his performance but yes you know this is what i try and do each week i try to keep an open mind and i was actually gonna until i, I can't deny like the you know the behind the scenes people are my mvps paul batney is certainly my honorable mention because i get it now i understand it i now know it's not for me but i, I didn't know if it was for me last week and i didn't quite fully get it but now i do have to agree with everything you just said john he's just as charming as i think i think all the cast is really working with what they got very well um, yeah. I, I, I enjoy like yeah I enjoy everything that usually complements a great movie. You know, that's happening in this show. It's just not the story. or the It's just not the story. story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's so I'm weird. Glad, I'm glad, it's I'm glad so we were weird. able to figure this out. I feel like we, we had a good therapy session here. As I needed far as it. I really it did. Yeah. So with that being said, let's move on to greater connections to the MCU and comic mm. books that inspired it before we wrap it up and get out of here. So despite there being relatively little that actually happened, there was a lot. Of reference in there. First of all, let's talk about the big Easter egg at the end. Obviously, once Monica Rambo is revealed with her sword pendant being a dead giveaway for the fact that she is working for the organization of Sword, which was of course revealed in Spider-Man: Far From Home. Um, what did we think of that overall? We see like her get tossed outside of a shield, and it is this kind of annihilation-looking shield-esque thing. So, like, what like what are our thoughts on that overall? Oh yeah, John, you can you can go, man. I feel like I've been talking all freaking night. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you're gonna have to remind me a little bit. Far from home had a reference to the cross organization. She or sword. the it's called sword. Sword. Okay. Um, it's been a minute since I've seen that, so you gotta. Okay, so post credit scene: Sam Jackson wakes up after having been called by uh, Talos, who's on Earth. It's the scroll from Captain Marvel, and he's been working with Fury for all these years. They're gonna have a Disney Plus show coming up called Secret Invasion. He's with right, Talos right. poses Nick Fury on Earth, and he calls Nick Fury, who's in like some sword shadow, some sword satellite, like who knows how far in space. And that is when Sword okay. was officially established. Okay, so I was gonna say like I don't remember anything like Peter Parker. That makes sense now. Okay, gotcha. Um. Yeah, I mean, I 
I know you guys are doing like connections to the comics. I can't say I've read a lot of comics related to the storyline at hand. So it's kind of, which is fine. Cause like you said, like we talked about earlier, I don't want to be that guy who's like, well, I read the book and the book is better. Cause I know it's not going to deliver. It's kind of like we said earlier. Um, I'm sorry. What was the question? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. My so, apologies. So, so she gets tossed no, outside of the, okay. yeah. So she gets tossed outside of the annihilation wall after she directly references two previous things that happened sure. to you, which is funny considering the fact that she references the most controversial and especially this movie's reputation is kind of not evolved. Well, due to the, obviously the actions involving its creator at being Avengers age of Ultron, the death of Wanda's twin brother, Pietro portrayed in that version by Aaron Taylor Johnson and Ms. Murder by Ultron portrayed by James Spader. So just to kind of the bring up of those two hints that we're going to see those two later on down the line, obviously, how that harkens back to Avengers Age of Ultron. And kind of, it's interesting, again, because this is the sense of where they mix it in with original MCU lore. Because in the MCU comics, there was this one reality that Wanda was living, where she was living not quite a sitcom lifestyle, but an ideal lifestyle with her two twin babies, who... <laughs> Uh, it was eventually revealed that it was all an illusion. <laughs> what a long question. It, it was eventually revealed to be an illusion generated by Agatha Harkness and Mephisto, who Wanda had literally made a deal kind of with the devil, basically. And once she discovered that, it caused her mind to literally break, and that's what she caused the Avenger dis disassembled storyline. And uh, her two children, uh, however, survived eventually. They grew up to become Billy Kaplan and Teddy Shepard. Yep, Teddy Shepard, who eventually became founding members of the Young Avengers, who were eventually founded, who have been largely hinted at from the greater overall MCU as having a lot of them been introduced subtly in Endgame and the Ant-Man movies. And here we have two more, as you literally saw Wanda and Vision arguing over the names, Billy and Teddy, if it was a boy, right. and then it turned out to be two boys. So we can assume that those are Wiccan and Speed, who are kind of basically think of it as that even though Wiccan is sure. a Scarlet Witch's powers, she's a younger version of Thor, and Speed is basically like Quicksilver 2.0. So gotcha. get all that? It's a lot. Yeah, but... I, I still don't hear a question. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wasn't a question. That was just more so, more so just kind of like... That was more so just kind of like acknowledging all the references. And, and, that was yeah. like Marvel Legends on speed. It was like, I, I thanks for the even, recap. I haven't, even gotten to, <laughs> I haven't even gotten to sword yet. Oh, man. Well, listen, I'll just chime in about all that. I, I don't care, to be honest oh, with you. Man. Yeah, I really don't care about any of that. Same here. It's, young Avengers, cool. Like, Nova's cool. I like that character, but just just give it to me already and if and if i like it when i watch it i'll, I'll praise it and if i don't I'll, i won't oh my god like i don't so i don't care man i know it's not that i'm impatient it's that i just impatient 23 movies years of just being led on and strung along for lackluster plots and lackluster payoffs i'm over it is what i am really for the most part uh, and so i don't care you know just give me a good show that i'm watching right now it doesn't always have to tie into something in the future that's going to be awesome i want to enjoy what i'm spending my time with in the moment it's kind of I, I, I agree with you, Chris, on a certain level with that, because like I I'm not the giant like comic book nerd with this plot line. So like you're not going to sell me on. Oh, my God, the Easter eggs you are going to sell me on what you're doing in this actual episode in this actual show. If we could talk about something that just happened with like the characters and great. But if you're going to be like, hey, look, did you see that Easter egg? I'm like, OK, you know, that's not storytelling. That's just fanboying, I guess. Yeah. It's like uh, what's that term people throw at like politicians? They don't like lip service. You're just you're just saying things that I want I want to hear, and but you're not really giving me anything. That's how I yep. feel about it. It's exactly how I feel about it. But anyways, Dom Sword, you said there was a tie-in with Sword, which was yeah. another thing they dropped that I thought was just lip service. But what do you know about it that I don't? Maybe change yeah, my mind. So Sword, it's basically kind of a secondary organization that was founded uh, after kind of Shield collapse. It stands for. Um, sentient world observation and response department. It basically is in this giant satellite called the peak hovering over earth. And they basically keep an eye on more so extraterrestrial threats. But considering that we know that the multiverse is going to play a large part coming up in future MCU properties, we can assume that this is why they are the organization that has taken play that has kind of been investigating. But kind of the theory that was kind of awakened in me that I wanted to bring up before, before we get out of here is the idea that, so we've been discussing largely the idea that this is an all that this will tie heavily into Dr. Strange, but what if this is another reality and this isn't actually our Wanda and vision? I don't know if that'll actually happen, but it wasn't a potential possibility that I was thinking of. I, I hate that. Oh man. <laughs> why, why do you hate that? What, 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 wouldn't it be something if they put something on us like that? It just seems like a little too much. I mean, it, 
Why? Because like Spider Verse, we're gonna do that whole. Only because that, only because that portal that uh, Monica Rambo got thrown through, it looked kind of like almost like a ripple between dimensions, kind of. And like, I just, I'm really interested, mm-hmm. in, and like, I want to know how this is gonna tie in with other dimensions, because like multiverse storytelling, I love that shit. Like, I need that injected directly into my veins. I See, do, with- but I don't. I, I think you're kind of going, you're getting ahead of yourself a little bit because they're going to do that. They're going to tie that together with Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, but I'm betting Doctor Strange will be the one to kind of bring that into the fold. I don't think it's going to be this early in the game. So you think Doctor Strange is the secret cameo they've hinted at? No, but like I said, as far as like the multiverse, I don't think we're going to do that yet. Not At least based on what I've seen in this. Uh, I think I think that I'm with you, John, in regards to not wanting that to be the case, because I think to open up phase four with that, with a storyline that essentially doesn't even matter uh, in in regards to all 23 movies that we've seen directly affecting it rather. Of course, with the multiverse, everything's in game, which is like the ultimate comic book cop out. But DC does it, too. I can't hate. I actually enjoy it. But it's just like I get it. I understand why you have that sort of like, hey, let's just break the sandbox because we need to keep selling units and stuff. I get it. I get it. And I well, actually they a, did cool things with it, but that's the problem I have with us right now is that like, there are no stakes because as far as I could tell, and I didn't like I didn't read the comics. I'm under the impression that we're inside her mind and that everything we're seeing is just like kind of her trying to work out things in her subconscious, but there's no stakes to anything like a dream can end. It can move on. So what? So that's kind of my biggest gripe with this, show because there's no ticking clock there's nothing that makes me go well if this happens or doesn't happen why should i care and that's kind of why it's a little slow for me right now why should i I care i totally agree with that and i think the multiverse can be done really really well i mean i actually really enjoy the character of dr strange Dom and I famously had to leave the theater. Oh, halfway that through was a fun time. That, that was, that, that was um, our first movie we ever saw together in the theaters. Yeah. And we had Film to leave because somebody set off the fire alarm. <laughs> Someone in our theater, John, smoked a cigarette. And we were like, just no, about to get a vape. They smoked a vape. Oh, a vape in the bathroom. They set off the fire the alarm. alarm with a vape. The thing that's what a, designed what an like asshole. make you not we, set off fire alarms we had gotten to the part in the movie where like the walls are starting to bend and stuff yes in the city and then we leave and i was like oh man i was actually like that's a marvel film i was really enjoying i was high out of my mind when i watched that like <laughs> yeah red- and uh, well, beyond oh, do- well it is dr strange so like who didn't go and yeah see it, well, I, like, I made right. a point like they told me that, what to do that so i'm like okay i'm gonna do that and i still was so, impressed by that movie but i was actually really liking it and then you know I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. I think that he's really works in the role. Um, Cumberbatch, I believe is his name. And uh, so I, I would be cool with that. But I just think like to show your hand that early, where's the lead up? Where's the the nuance? Where's the finesse to get to like the multiverse and to sort of, you know, bring in these new characters, all these new films we're going to get in phase four. I think if they did what you said, Dom, it would just really discredit this new era, this new, we need a new villain. Thanos isn't here anymore. It would really just turn it into a cw wanky bonkers universe where they clearly did not know how to handle after a short time four different shows and they used the multiverse and it got real messy and you went from loving it each week understanding what it was but loving it to like not watching it after like season three yeah. or four which i know a lot of people it's, walked away from like the flash and arrow so it's too big after endgame yeah i mean why look, we gotta come back I mean, look, we look, gotta look, dial it back and then rebuild you know yeah, look, the, one, the, the one thing the one thing that i will say is that Look, I, I knew that the that kind of our version of the MCU that we knew was never going to be the same going forward past Endgame. And as far as this being a radical shift in direction, that's kind of the thing that I'm still admiring of them. And that's the thing that's still kind of keeping me invested throughout all of this, you know? But, um, what's it called? But as far as kind of Disney never really having the resource to do it, this is just what they choose to do it with. They want to do it with family-friendly fun, and this is the easiest way to do that. So, So, my last question then. I want to get both of you guys' opinions on this, and then we can sort of wrap this thing up and head out of here. Are you guys fearful for the MCU going forward now? No. Do you think that's it? We've peaked? We can't get back to where we were? I feel like that's a subjective take, because they are clearly show that they are having uncontinued, unbridled success, so they're just going to keep doing what they do. And as far as, you know, whether they'll fail, well, no, not for a long, long time, just as far as they continue to experiment around like this with their structure— but I think as far as taste goes, they'll gain new watchers and, you know, only time will tell as far as that goes. Yeah, I just think multiverse out the gates is not the right way to sort of uh, 
let people know your new direction is uh, going to be as good as the old one. But John, what's, what's your take on all that? Am I fearful for the MCU? No, not really. <laughs> not in the least. I mean, it's Disney. They're the biggest company on the planet. You know, if anything, like they might look at some of the comments and some of the feedback and go, OK, we need to course correct a little bit. Um, we might hit that bubble of people getting tired of superheroes a little bit. That might be a thing. But no, nah, man, this this is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, it well, might like dip. Was... It might kind of lose quality, but it's you know, I'm not I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Same. Yeah, quick, I, I, I mean, I've been over it, so I was just sort of asking to get your guys' opinions. You seem a little more hopeful than me, so yeah. Well, I'm I'm still gonna watch it week to week overall, because just because it's January, right. there's nothing else to watch right now. But Jay, I wanted exactly. to real quick say that a topic of movies to get high before watching. Oh man, I've got some stories I can tell, <laughs> and I can also make that uh, into a top ten list. That would be we'll amazing. save that for uh, our next talking TV after midnight. Yeah, we'll say yeah, we'll save that for this. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll save that for this year's 420. We can do a 420 oh, celebration man. on it. Oh, wow. Well, anyways, uh, yes. this was cool, guys. I, yeah, John, really enjoyed having you come and hang. Yeah, man, absolutely. Appreciate it. So, Dom, yeah. is there anything else you wanted to talk about here <laughs> well, on our uh, episode three journey? Well, I was going to say thank you to the people once again for tuning in to another episode. I feel like we kind of talked all that we can talk about with this. Uh, star ratings, I guess, if you want to do those. Yeah, we um, have to. Tradition. Yeah, I'll give, the, I'll give this episode three and a half out of five. Again, wasn't great. Just continued more of what I was expecting from last week. I really wish I had more to say as far as that goes. But it's like, ah. Uh. Speaks to the show. I mean, yeah. I think it speaks to the show we're getting. Uh, for me, it's a uh, two out of five. It's, uh, you know, uh, it just the, the merits of everything I've said. Everything I like about it isn't enough to keep me hooked and keep me going. And if I wasn't doing this show each week, I'm, I may tune out after next week if it's more of the same. If it was just me casually watching this, you know, no podcast, no wanting to dissect it each week, I may, I may tune out. If it was just regular Chris, you know, in, in another in a multiverse, the Chris who doesn't have a podcast probably would tune out if we get another episode like this week, next week. So two out of five. John, what about you? I give it a three. I, you know, it's pretty average. Um, you know, it feels like an in-between episode, but it, you do have like an ending that's kind of compelling and kind of uh, head scratchy. So, you know, three out of five. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Good points all around, fellas. We just weren't given the best episode. I mean, right. it just speaks just to the a show. Lot to we're talk getting. about once again. So, but thank you to the people who once again tuned in to yet another episode of Wanda of our Wandavision recap episode. We have six more weeks of this to go, people. So be sure to tune in for that all the way up until the end. God oh man, us. we're gonna make it. We're gonna make hey, it. Hey, you know, but, this was this was fun, guys. If you want me to come back for one of these episodes, let me know. I'll come oh, back. Oh, we most hey, definitely come back for will the finale. have you back. <laughs> what we're doing is we're having everyone who's been on each individual week's episode come back for a grand finale, sort of like two, two and a half hour oh panel, God. depending on how it goes, like wrap up. If you're down for that, we'd love to have you, man. It's gonna be a banger. I'm yeah, man. You. Perfect. So, guys, you can check out John in our finale 23 weeks from now when we finally get to the finale. And no, John, I was also gonna ask, where could the good people find you online? Mm. Um, I'm on everything. I'm on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Letterbox. I have a website. It's BurnsReviews.com. Um, Jay Burns at Twitter, Burns Reviews on Instagram. Obviously, I'm right here on YouTube. I got like three videos a week, uh, Burns Reviews. So, uh, yeah, pretty easy to find. Um, I'll probably comment down below and pin it or something like that. You, I'm easy to find. You'll find me. I'm on all the social medias. They haven't got a you're, website. Just launch You're it. the second Jay Burns that I've known in my uh, internet career overall. And I once again thank you to the chat, Jay Manley, Stranger Boy, all the other people who tuned in to us tonight. Overall, it was a lot of fun. But, and each week, for that matter, we yes, really appreciate you guys. Yes, and we really appreciate you guys. But as always, you can leave, you can click click the news people that are coming to the channel can click the subscribe button. They can click the bell next to it. That way, they get notified every time we put up new content. We have content that we put up every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. This coming week, people, it's it. We're finally wrapping up our top tens of 2020. We're with top 10 best movies of 2020. We're doing it. It's happened on mo on Monday. Tune in at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time if you want to find out what the 10 best movies of the year as anointed by us are. You can follow us on our Facebook yeah. and Instagram at Talkin TV Podcast. No G overall. We'll be back next week with episode four. As always, people, watch more movies, watch more TV, and keep being slaves to Disney. We'll see you next week.